In a recent interview, a respected colleague of mine shared a health crisis that caught him off guard. He paid attention to markers, and while everything looked okay on paper, beneath the surface there was an unseen problem. My colleague, Dr. Michael Bergelin, is a board-certified chiropractic internist and is currently the president on the Council on Internal Diagnosis and Disorders. I appreciate his openness and willingness to share his story. Dr. Bergelin, you don't even know this, but I saw on your Facebook page that you had had a heart attack, and I was like, what? How could he, how could that be possible? I, I know Mike, he's like so, he's a diplomat, he's an internal medicine guy, what, what happened? I've just been dying to ask you, give me the story, give me the scoop. Well, I, I, have a, I always had a view, and, and you know how sometimes we have a view of how things are supposed to be, right? Okay. And how, how things happen to people. Um, I was really busy the day before this all happened. I was like running around like a chick with my head cut off thinking, and, 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 and not in a very calm and peaceful way, in a, in a very stressed way. And I didn't have any heart attack, didn't have any symptoms, didn't have anything at that point. The next day, after everything was cleaned up and I'm, I'm rested, um, I start having symptoms. And uh, the symptoms were just indigestion, and I, I was still convinced because I, I wasn't doing anything that um, it wasn't a heart attack. And my wife was just like, oh, but what if it is? And then, and I'm like, but it isn't. And she goes, but what if it is? And I'm like, well, and then I'm like, well, it's something else. And she goes, well, even if it's something else, like, Let's you're not going go to go. You're not going to sleep tonight. It's eleven o'clock at night, and you have these symptoms. You're not going to sleep because they're really intense. And I go, yeah. yeah, let's go. So we went in, and the first, you know, my EKG is fine. The first the, uh, set of blood tests were all fine, and uh, they were like, huh. I go, well, I still have symptoms. They go, hmm. They go, let's do it. We'll do it again in forty-five minutes. They ran the the cardiac enzymes again forty-five minutes later, and that time they were positive. Really. And then the next in the morning they were they were still positive. And so they canceled the stress test because they didn't, while I was still having uh, issues and struggle, my heart was struggling, they didn't want to, you know, do a stress test during that time. So yeah. the cardiologist said, let's do, let's do an angiogram, let's do a cardiac catheterization, and let's see what, how things are. And what they found was that I was 99% blocked in the left anterior descending, the, 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 the widow maker, yeah. right? Um, and uh, I had a 50 and a 60% in blocked in the circumflex and the, and the uh, right coronary artery, but the, the left anterior descending was 99. So they put two stents in there. Okay. And, um, and uh, then they released me, um, you know, 24 hours later. Wow. And so um, my EKG still looks normal to this day. Okay. Um, so uh, I don't, didn't sustain any heart damage, so I was able to get back to work right away. But I'm now aware, you know, of my, uh, that, that, that I'm a, I'm a ticking, I'm ticking bomb, right? Okay. Um, knowing that this is going on, my challenge is then I came out of the hospital, I go, I have to figure this out. So I ran a bunch of blood tests on myself, um, a bunch of markers. Uh, I wanted to know, like, what's abnormal? Sure. Um, and because I, I wasn't happy with the idea that they were saying, well, you can't have a yearly catheterization mm -hmm. to check and see how these blockages are doing. They only do catheterizations if they think you're having a heart attack. Sure. So, sure. And what did you find? I mean, what would be, you know, you're talking right now to a bunch of other docs. What are, what are some of the screening things that you might recommend for them to do? To well, take the, a look the at? classic ones you look at are, you know, obviously cholesterol, right? You know, HDL, triglycerides, LDL. Uh, but there's also uh, other biomarkers include uh, ferritin, uh, fibrinogen, um, homocysteine. Uh, there's a CRP and there's HSCRP, which is a high sensitivity CRP, C reactive protein. Yeah. Uh, and then we get into the size of the cholesterol cells. The fluffier ones, the bigger ones seem to be better. The, the denser ones seem to uh, kind of find their way into a plaques uh, better. Mm -hmm. uh, there's oxidative LDL, which is a right. which is a marker. Right. Um, there's uh, uh, omega three, omega six fatty acid ratios. Ratio. That's a right. that's a marker. Um, t testosterone is a mm. marker for guys. Yeah. Um, so uh, lower testosterone is a is a indicator of, of cardiovascular risk. There's also uh, genetic testings. Um, so there's there's certain SNPs that'll show up for certain people, and they imply uh, that uh, that you might be at a higher risk, and, okay. and that you should should avoid certain drugs, and certain statins, and other and, and do other things for it. Um, there's um, Apolipoproteins, uh, A, A1, B, uh, there's something called ProBNP, which is another, uh, I think it's a nucleopeptide. Um, there's a variety of different, fa you don't realize, I, I, I was reading an audio book uh, from the, uh, the bale donin method, and they talked about a variety of these testings, and, and, and uh, you know, that you, that if you're diabetic, that, that's a cardiovascular, so then sure, you go dive absolutely. down that. If you have hypertension, obviously, look, 
I have no diabetes risk based on any of the, the hip waist ratio, the triglycerides are always less than 100, I, my, my A1C is always great, uh, I have no uh, elevated blood pressure, um, mm. and I'm within 10% of my normal weight. Uh, so some people like look at me and they go, you know, but I had a dad who had uh, cardiovascular disease, he had angina for four years before he had stents put in at 58. Mm. Um, I went into the hospital at 56, had a birthday in the hospital, wow. uh, and checked out on my birthday um, uh, 36 hours later. So I knew a heart attack was in the realm of possibility. Yeah. So to, you know, but I had been running like I did the calcium, the coronary calcium scoring, yeah. uh, and I was low risk for that. Um, so and it, and I so it wasn't a, a calcium plaque. It wasn't a calcium plaque. It was a lipid plaque, mm. right? And my my cholesterol had been high. Yeah. Right, so uh, and I tend to need a lot of antioxidants. I tend to need a lot of calcium in my system, um, and those are my tendencies. Now, I, to be fair, I didn't probably do enough exercise. Okay. I'm fairly sedentary. Okay, um, I didn't deal with the cholesterol at all because I was kind of a, being stubborn and believing that the cholesterol thing was a myth, and it's a myth to a certain degree. And but. If you have to delve into the details, like are they big, are they little, are right. they this, are they, because so you, you know, ignore those, because because right, and yeah. I ignored yeah. those, and so I um, and I also d wasn't a huge consumer of like vegetables. I'm, I'm not a big vegetable fan, uh, as probably a lot of people aren't, but um, the fiber and the phytonutrients and the and the, uh, the, the antioxidants and, and the polyphenols are huge, huge, right? Again, yeah. and antioxidants yeah. and the, you know all those things. So so I've had to do some changes. Um, and uh, I tried doing CrossFit and I tried doing kickboxing and my body was like, no, no, that's not a good place to start. So I'm, I'm scaling back to a little uh, a, a more realistic plan. Uh, but I, I'd like to get up there. I, you know, I've done marath I've done marathons and I've done uh, running and triathlons and those kind. Of, I'm just not in a regular routine. Yeah. You know, I'm just one of those people. And there's probably a lot of people out there that that I like to know what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And if sure. I'm just doing it. For the heck of it, you're um, not going to do. I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do much, right. right? You know, I'm not. I don't like dusting. I don't like doing redundant work that just is there that I just have to keep doing. Yeah. But I now know of, there's certain things I have to do, and I'm going to use these biomarkers, mm. the ones that were positive, mm. like the fibrinogen was elevated and the homocysteine was elevated. I can use mm. those as indicators, and I'm going to try and do. There's also a, an ultrasound mm. of the carotid called the uh, intermediate thickness test, mm. and that's a good correlator in studies with uh, uh, my type of, type of placking. You know, if you don't see the calcium with, there's a duplex ultrasound, but then there's a uh, ultrasound that's called the coronary, and they're looking at the intima media thickness, and they can tell by that going, and they can extrapolate. Because you can't, you, you can't, can't do these tests for the heart. No, they, won't, exactly. they, they won't do a catheterization as a screening test. Right. Colonoscopies, yes. You know, a cardiac catheterization, no. It's not a good screening test. Well, I appreciate you being so transparent and encouraging all of us to take a closer look at our hearts. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Joe. Dr. Berglund's story is a wake-up call for us professionally and personally. Are we comprehensive in our screening for heart health? Perhaps we could reevaluate our cardiovascular protocol or upgrade our approach to prevention. Patients with a family history of heart disease need additional screening procedures. Our patients trust us, and sometimes they need our advice to seek further testing. It's humbling to remember that even though our treatments are effective and offer a vast range of benefits, it could be a referral that saves a life. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to being with you again next Tuesday.